everyone okay? Thank you so much, um, Education uh, Department. It is such a, a great honor uh, that I can come here and go home with a gift. You know, it's, it was such an unexpected, and uh, I think the excitement might make me, you know, uh, forget some things that I wanted to say. Just know that it's because of the excitement. If I don't say what I was to say, know that it's because of the excitement. <laughs> Um, so I want to welcome us this evening to consider a passage of scripture found in the book of Hebrews, um, yeah, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, just a, a passage of scripture and uh, at chapter 11 we are looking at uh, verse 23. Um, uh, that is what we will use to wrap up what we have been discussing since morning. And uh, so um, the, the scriptures say that by faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So let's pray. Father in heaven, come along with us again as you instruct us in your way of life on how we can do parenting that will stand the test of time. The winds of this age will, will blow over, but that impregnable hearts of men and women who will have been products of this kind of education will always stand to and on your side to give glory and honor to your name. We seek, therefore, that in the few minutes coming, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the, the, the book of Hebrews is, is a very interesting book. Needless to say that uh, it was written by Paul, that does not mean it's not contested. It is contested. But largely, it is accepted that um, this is Paul. And so we are getting into the mind of Paul. In verse, at verse 23, you remember the entire chapter 11 of Hebrews talks about uh, men and women who heaven has recognized as men who had faith and women, men and women who had faith. And, 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 and so, verse 23 says, by faith, Moses' parents. So credibility here is so much of the parents to Moses. It's not so much about Moses. Of course, you will see then what happens, the outworking of what the parents did in terms of what Moses is going to do later. That's very, very critical. So at, at verse it says, by faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born. That's, that's what it says. So, so we can look at it uh, together. Uh, can we read it together, please? Let's, let's read it. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Question. Why did the parents hide Moses? This is the problem with classroom teachers. You really struggle. Even when you have shown and demonstrated one plus one is two, when you ask them now one plus one, they look at you. <laughs> okay, let's read it again. Oh, sorry, man. It's already gone. <laughs> let's read it again. By faith, Moses, comma, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. Question, why did the parents hide Moses? Because 
He was a beautiful child. Yes, yes, sir. He was no ordinary child. He was no ordinary child. And, and they, see, they, they see this boy in their hands and they say, no, this is not an ordinary child. And, and so they hide. Any other person who knows why they, they hid Moses? Yes, sir. Yes, that's, that's very true. I wish you could put it the other way around. What was the king's command? Yes, yes. Uh, no, what, what the elder is saying is actually the truth. I'm just uh, we just want to put it uh, in the... But let me hear you. Yes, yes, sir. I can hear. What is the command? Very good. So is that the reason why the parents of Moses hid him? From this verse. He was no ordinary. No ordinary child. And, and for that reason they hid him. The, the, the parents of Moses did not hide him because they, they were fearing of the killing of the sons. That was not the reason. It's overruled already there. But the reason is because when they were holding this little baby, they did not think this was an ordinary child. And by the way, is there any parent who after giving birth to a child, you look at them and you just see ordinariness? I'm yet to see that. Every parent, when God blesses you with a child, you breathe with a sigh of relief. You say, oh my, finally God has visited with me. Whether they are late comers or early comers or whichever time they have come, you will always say, hey God, Thank you, finally you have remembered me. And you look at this child, as you look into their eyes, you can be, perhaps you can be looking at an engineer, a medical doctor, a CJ of Kenya some years to come, the president, the governor, you, and no, no parent considers their child as an ordinary child. And, and the Bible says they decided to hide him. And, and hiding, you hide for three months. I thought a child who is not ordinary, you know, from where I come from in Western, when children are born and they are young, mothers always hide them, but for different reasons. Back at my place, there is what we call African chemistry. Uh, there is a way where things would move from somebody's eyes and, and enter the body of a child and, and you cannot see where they went through, and they will remain there. You see, so, so, so mothers would always hide their children. But they don't hide them for three months. They hide them for as long as they are still children, you know. They say, oh, oh you know, no, no, no. Uh, protect the child from the bad eyes. That's what they will always say. But the bad eye element is not the reason why Moses' parents are hiding Moses. And, and doing it for three months? Now, now, let me tell you, it is a fact that the king had given an edict that all ch boy children who were born under two years should be killed. That's a fact. And, and these parents knew that, uh, of course, Moses will be killed anyway, he will be killed. It's, it's, it's not a matter of uh, 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 whether or not. It is a matter of when. And, and so they said, okay, wait a minute. Because dying, he will die. Can we hide him for some time and put inside Moses that which will last for eternity? Even if he dies, that which we will put inside, that which we are going to to wire him with must be able to last for eternity and if he survives the knife then he should become a man of no ordinary circum circumstance and this is what they did 
So they did the best they could. The father, I remember Amram and Jochebed sitting there every morning and for three months they are doing what no other men would always do. Because for as men, you, you wait for your wife to take care of your child when they begin going to school. That's when you begin holding their hands, you walk with them. This is not what happened. At, before, at, within these three months, Moses is, is taken. There is a harambe upbringing because it takes a man and a woman to get a child. It therefore takes a man and a woman to bring up a child. I know I'm talking to guys who may not agree with this, but I think I am reasonably informed in this area. It does, he doesn't have to be there. She doesn't have to be there, but it takes two, the mother or a mother figure, the father or a father figure to bring up a child who is straightforward. It takes two. And for that reason, I always advise church members, we are a family. And for that reason, there are sisters who have children and their fathers are not here. Maybe they belong to other churches or they have not come to church. Fathers who are here, as a family, you have to provide the father figurehood to those children. When you get time to mentor your own boys and girls, call these other children. Tell these sisters to allow some of these children to visit your homes and sit with these kids and mentor them, bring them up in a balanced manner. A am I saying something? And of course, vice versa. If there are fathers here and the mothers are not here, and those fathers come with their children because it is also uh, it, it is a possibility. Look at mothers who are here. See how you can help mentor the children uh, because it's very critical. And so just to sum up what I am saying, what this man did, the, the life of Moses, the future life of Israel uh, depended largely on, on what Jochebed and Amram did finally. And, and, and they did for three months. And what they did for three months could never be a rest that this boy went and stayed in a palace. Now, now I know a, a majority of us, 90% and above of us, understand what palace life is. Palace life is not easy. It can arrest literally everything. And if you want to know, see how some of us who are nobodies and when God has blessed us and we go to begin sitting at high tables, how we behave, our spirituality is normally strangled. But, but it was not so with this young man. He, he went and lived in a palace and right in the palace, what was put in him for three months was enough to uh, ensure that no influence no confluence of ideas, of arts, of music, of anything else that was humanly, that could arrest that which this man, this man and woman had put in Moses. I have some advice. Hide your child. Hide your child. I'll go back to this book again. Ellen G. White, the Advent, Adventist home. I, I use this book for many things. I, I use it for my side hustles as a counselor, and I also use it for preaching. So this is very, very important. Um, it's important for us to know. So I'll take you there. And by the way, I would just ask, just cross over to on Sunday or Monday to our ABC here and get this. Uh, it's less than a thousand bob. But what it has is, is, is just amazing. Um, I'll read uh, a few pages about fathers, then I'll climax with mothers. Uh, page 221 of this book. Um, this is what uh, the servant of the Lord says. 221, uh, that's the page. And she says about fathers, now listen, what we're supposed to do. 
she says, during the first few years of a child's life, the molding of the disposition is committed principally to the mother. But you should ever feel that in her work, she has the cooperation of the father. If he is engaged in business, which is almost wholly closes the door of usefulness to his family, he should seek other employment which will not prevent him from devoting some time to his children. Talk of, you know, I'm going to look for, to, I'm working for the family. You are not working for any family. You are working for yourself. There's no family you are working for. If, if, if whatever you are doing cannot keep you closer to your children, who are you working for? You will struggle, and when you are very old, you come back home at your retirement, you have drunkards in your home. You cannot have peace. That which you have managed to invest in, you have built, you have done this, they ruin it within no time. And the reason is you were not there. It is not about investing for our children, but it's about investing in our children. Make sure, as fathers, she advises, if your business, your work, will make it very hard. You'll be in the U.S., you'll be in, uh, in Dubai for six months and you cannot see your children. She, she says you better stop the Dubai business and do something around here so that you can be closer to your children. Page 222. She says, Fabas, associate with your children in work and the sports. Says, Fabas, combine affection with authority kindness and sympathy with firm restraint. Give some of your leisure hours to your children. Become acquainted with them. Associate with them in their work and in their sports and win their confidence. Cultivate friendship with them, especially with your sons. Because it takes a man to bring up a, a man. A, a woman has their space. They can do so much. But a woman can bring up a woman. And a man brings up a man. A woman cannot bring up a man. And, and I think this is very, very critical. This is not family life, but I think that can be handled later. So, so, so associate. As a man, have show interest in your sons especially. Sit with them and get to know men. How is it? And talk. Ile tunaita, ile tunaita u baba. You know, discuss hard stuff. Men, here we are. We have these responsibilities. How are we going to handle them? Involve them as young as they are to know the, the, the right position of a man. Then, of course, because of time, I'll jump to uh, page 231 to talk about mothers briefly. But men... We, can, we have a lot of uh, chapters there from chapter 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, talking about men. Now here in chapter 38, talking about mothers. And I'm happy with this one. She says, an angel, of course, let me read the paragraph. Mother is the queen of the home. That's what she says. That's the subtopic, the queen of the home. The king upon his throne has no higher work than has the mother. The mother is queen of her household. She has in her power and molding of the influence of character that they may be fitted for the higher immortal life. An angel could not ask for a higher mission. But what this simply means is that there are many things we know that angels don't know. One of them is that we don't have angels that are a female or a male, so they don't give birth. So angels don't know what a giving birth means. But apart from that, angels do not understand what it means to teach this little girl who is as little as... Uh, sometimes I have, I've, I've been in the hostels, you know, to see kids, especially in the nursery. Some of them are small like a, like a day-old chick. They, they are that small. And, and, and like, like the palm of my hand. That's a child, a whole human being, and later there will be a professor. It's a, it's a tiny little thing. And, and this mother is able to mould them as, as, the, as the child grows up, as, as the baby grows up, grows, growing, growing, growing. And, and the mother is able to communicate and, and teach them how to, 
to talk. And, and then within no time, you see the child here reciting an entire passage of Scripture. It just does not happen. It just does not happen. Out of flux is flux. Out of nothing comes out nothing. Only evolutionists, they are the only ones who believe that you can pick a, a Mercedes Benz from, uh, from uh, the dump side. Uh, in, in, uh, they, they believe that, you know, evolutionists, they believe that you can, you can pick a, an up Oppo phone, uh, an Oppo phone from, uh, from rubbish, you know, collected in uh, Kawangware. You just go to the rubbish and then you pick out an Oppo phone. A nice phone. That's only evolutionists believe that. It, it just doesn't work. And you see this child standing here preaching, praying. And you wonder, look at this. You see these tiny boys and girls who have been, been here singing songs. They may not understand the impact of that. But, but it, it simply means there is some work that has gone into it. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Yeah. And so it says, angels don't understand when they see you mothers struggling, teaching them how to pray. Then they ask, can you pray? They say, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven. And you think it's a joke. For you, you think it's a joke, but in heaven is another drama altogether. <laughs> it's a high level of drama. Heaven is working. Angels will be sent to guard the children. In fact, the angels of children are always the most active than the angels of the elderly like us because we, we, we don't listen to them. And so angels will guard, but they don't understand what it means to put, to create an individual who will become so serviceable to their community, to their families, and to the entire nation. They, they, they don't understand. So, so, so says, she says, angels could not ask for a higher work. In other words, angels always look at us and they, they feel like, oh God, we, we wish you gave us a chance to experience that. Mm. Then, of course, page 240, um, um, as I come to the close, page 240, um, and she says, like mother, like child. At my place, we say, a bad child resembles the mother. So, so, but, but that's just uh, our proverb, you know, from my tribe. Uh, is, is a bad child resembles the mother. Uh, but, but I think that's not true. Um, uh, like mother, just like father, like son, like mother, like daughter, or like mother, like son, like, like father, like daughter. It, it happens, it works like that too. Now she says, the tender rest earthly tie is that between the mother and her child. You see, you see, God, I think we men, sometimes I, I, I feel for my wife because God did not choose me to be the one uh, to carry the child in my womb. You know, they breathe the same oxygen. They breathe the same oxygen. The same blood the same food. When she eats, the child eats the same food. <laughs> you know, blood and oxygen, everything else. So, so everything that goes on in her system is actually part of what is going on in the system of that particular infant. That, that's, that's why the tie is close. So, so I hear some fathers who say, no, you know, this woman has taken away my children. No, I mean, there is nothing you can do this, I mean, they bonded for nine months. You were in the U.S. when they were bonding, eating the same food, breathing the same oxygen. And then when, when the child was born, you were still in the U.S. And, and then, are you getting what I'm saying, man? The child goes to school. It's your wife who goes to school. And she goes to school. And then when she's in school, they cry together. They say, you see, my daughter, you know, your father has, uh, has abandoned us. Uh, uh, there is no life for me here. I, you are my hope. And, and you know, it's, she's bewitching that child. You are not there. I, I told my wife, when you visit your, our child today, tomorrow I'm the one to visit. Yeah. I will also go tell my daughter, uh, my daughter, you know, you are my hope. 
So you go, you tell her, uh, my, my wife will tell her, I'll also tell her, so that she gets confused. Because everyone depends on her. And the reason I'm doing that is to avoid a situation where when they grow old, they are so much leaning on the side of the mother. If anything, I want to spend more time with my daughter and my son. I want to do that a little more. Because they spend nine months when I, I could not access. The only thing I could only provide is just the enabling environment. But, but now that, that they are out, I want to spend more time so that they know more of their father. Praise the Lord. That is the way men who are here. It is not the school fees you are paying. You will pay 150,000 shillings per year. She only gives that child 500 shillings, which is change that you gave to her. She uses the 500 to take away the child from you. So, so be there, compete. Am I saying something? This is education. This is education. This is what will guarantee you how much money you'll be given as a man when you are retired, you are at home, and your child is uh, working somewhere. Otherwise, your wife will be getting more and you get less, or you get nothing. And the wife will say, see, if you give to your father money, he will get married. Don't give him any money. If he wants, send the money to me and I can do whatever he wants. So I think basically what he's saying is, it begins long time from the time the child is in the womb. Don't allow the mother to be the only one singing. As, as the mother sings, also sing for the child. Yeah. Sing for the child. Move closer to the, to the mother's uh, stomach and uh, sing from there and shout. <laughs> sing, sing. Because, because the child hears. They hear. You can be sure they hear those songs. Am I saying something? No, no, no. You guys, you're not hearing what I'm saying. There's a notorious person here who doesn't uh, listen. And so, she, she says, the child is more readily impressed by the life and example of the mother than by that of the father. For a stronger and more tender bond of union unites them. Then, of course, uh, she talks about uh, this kind of bonding, explaining down, and how it comes. She says, spend time as a, a man. Break through. Get through. Get through. When the child is young, put, them, put, put in it what you also would like to have. Page 251, um, I'm just, uh, you know, highlighting because of uh, time. Um, mother's health and personal appearance. This is chapter 42, and this is very, very critical. She says, mothers to be advocates of health reform. Do you know the education of health reform is lacking in the Seventh-day Adventist church? Today now, when you go to the hospitals, those of us who go to these other hospitals, when you go there, you are told, uh, you, uh, do you take this one? You say, yes, do you take this one? Why are you taking it when you are an Adventist? I thought you're Adventist, you're not supposed to be doing this. These are the things you're supposed to stop. And, and the reason why health reform is not even propagated in most cases from the pulpit here is because those of us who are supposed to be leading out in the work are not in it. Now, this is what she advises. She says, as a man, you cannot. The mother can be. If she chooses, she, when this child comes out, she, the first uji will be uji without sugar. And, and when the child grows up, six, seven months, one year later, you give them uji with sugar, the child says, no, it doesn't taste like this is what my mother used to give me. They refuse. So, 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 so the, the lessons of health reform can be taught well. This education of the, of, the, of the body can be taught well, especially to children, but by mothers. You are the only one who can succeed. Otherwise, as a man, you say, in this home, I don't want this. You are wasting time. They will eat when you are not there. So, so just allow everything to go, but discuss with, talk your wife. And if your wife buys into the idea, the children will always buy into it. Have I said something? Then, of course, page 252. Now, the whole of chapter 42 is very critical. It talks about exercise self-control in diet. So I used to wonder why sometimes mothers can cook food, bring to the table, and they don't eat. They, they wait for everybody else to eat, and they're just watching. Later, I discovered, I discovered actually the reason is because they eat more times. Many times. Eight many, many times. You know, before, before this uji uh, is given to the child, they test. When 
they set a cup of coffee on the table for the visitors, they taste in the kitchen first. When they are cooking, whatever they do, they must taste it. So they eat many times for that reason before the food comes on the table. You know, they, you know for you, you have not eaten, so you feel like, uh, but for them, they are a little bit at home. Am I saying something? <laughs> no, lest mothers will uh, accuse me. But is this really the truth? Or maybe I'm saying something else. Okay, <laughs> fine. So there are many other reasons why. So now, when... Uh, uh, the appetite is like, I must eat now, I must test this, I must test this. She says, especially when the child is in the womb, if we do that, we are teaching these children to be men and women who, what they want, they must get it at the time they want. And, and so that is uh, the challenge. Then, of course, she talks about self-esteem, and I think our able teachers were discussing how you, we can create you know, positive self-esteem in our children as they grow up. And one of the things these kids sometimes struggle with in high school, some of them are suffering from low self-esteem because of the way they have been brought up. Now, Ellen G. White gives a component of creating a positive self-image in our children as they grow up. And she says, this is what she says, it is about your choice of clothing. <laughs> So uh, somebody's asking, now how, how, do, how, how, how can clothing contribute to us? Now listen to what the, the, the servant of the Lord says. Sisters, when about their work, should not put on clothing which would make them look like images to frighten the cross from the corn. It is more gratifying to their husbands and children to see them in a becoming well-fitting attire than it can be to mere visitors or strangers. And I wish her time to read the entire passage. She simply says, don't put on to look like a scarecrows uh, because you are, you know, uh, 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 undermining the esteem of your children and even your husband too. But now, mothers, if you want to confirm what I'm saying, I'll give you an assignment as I wind up. You go home, if you have some teenagers in your home, take them to your, what do you call it, wardrobe or something? Okay, go, take them to your wardrobe. As a mother, take them there and ask them, um, when I come to school to see you, eh, which dress would you like me to put on? Don't ask which one don't you want. Eh, did you get it? Please get, get it. Because you, you may not get the, if you ask a wrong question, you are likely to get a wrong answer. So you say, which dress would you like me to put on? And she will say, this one, uh, this one. And there are several others she does not mention. Don't worry, just listen to what she's saying, and this one. And when she has told you that, or he has told you that, then please know that that is exactly how she feels. When you come to school in anything other than that, you make them feel so dejected. I, I, I also teach. And uh, sometimes parents come to college to visit their children. And when a child sees their mother or father and how they are addressed, sometimes they disappear. And the parents will scratch and scratch. they will send people. He was just somewhere here. They go looking for them. They are nowhere. They have gone into hiding because they saw how you are dressed. Self-esteem of your child is is also dependent on how you dress. I pray that the Lord will bless us. I pray that we will provide a home that is facilitative enough to help our children grow up in the fear of the Lord. And that when finally this life will be over, we will hear the great commendation, well done, faithful servant, enter the joy of your Lord. Because of the great missionaries who will have produced uh, right in our homes, out in the society. May God bless you. Maybe we would uh, ask that uh, we just rise up and have a closing prayer as the choir comes on stage. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I pray that we will have more Moses and more of the unnamed uh, little maiden girl in the palace of Naaman from our homes who will make differences in the people's lives. Amen. Let us...
as, as they come, we just want to pray together. Let's pray. Please come, come over, come over, come over, guys. Thank you. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, it's, it's been a joy just uh, being here, worshiping and fellowshipping with one another. Your word is always new every day. We stumble on some truths that make us get back to ask ourselves whether we have really understood these things or not. Even over the things we think we know, your word has a way of challenging us to see it in a different way. Today we have been talking about education for mission. How we, we can provide an en enabling environment at home that will make missionaries of our children, our boys and girls at home, who will go out there and make differences in the people's lives. But many times we have made uh, very interesting crooks from homes because of our relationship. Sometimes we quarrel before children. Sometimes we are so uh, impatient with our children. For, for whatever reason, God, things have not worked in, in our homes and families. Some of us are here, but our children are not in church anymore. We, we just pray for forgiveness because we did not know, Lord, but help us, oh God that today there could be grandchildren, there could be neighbors' children, there could be church children in the church, that we can be able to put our hands together and bring up a formidable army of young men and women who will change the world. Because while the devil is looking for children, God, you are interested in the same children. And so like the Israelites, we say we will go with our children. We will not leave them behind. We will go with them. We will, we, where we will be, they will be. We, we are seeking for wisdom. We are seeking for knowledge. And those of us who are still uh, uh, blessed to continue having children, we just pray, dear Lord, that in a special way, we will seek for knowledge and wisdom on how we can do this work earnestly. Because it has a reward. When we will be together with our children, together in heaven. Oh, Lord, what a joy it will be. But Lord, what, what, what sadness will be when we get there and some of our children will not be there. Help us to be the best, to do the best for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.